ahead and get started. Um, the last several days, our world has been turned upside down. And it's mind boggling how many changes have happened just in the last few days. I mean, the changes that were really unimaginable just a few weeks ago. Um, just the thought that Walmart is actually closing early all across the country is is absolutely amazing and that that really tells us about the state of things around us um, but people's health is important and that's part of the reason why we're doing what we're doing by a meeting this way um, in many places you know you got public buildings that are now closed to the public and people are staying at home Families are actually talking together. And get this, some families are actually eating together and they're eating together at the at the old kitchen table or the dining room table. I'm sure some of them still have their phones in their hands, but it's amazing. Families are actually coming together um, and doing things that they haven't done in a while together. Maybe even playing some games like Monopoly or something. But um, students are... Who were sitting in a classroom just a few weeks ago are now being taught at home. Colleges and universities have dismissed their students and asked them to begin their studies online. Businesses have closed the doors and there have been many workers that have been laid off. I heard from a young lady just today told me that she was laid off from a job and uh, hard times, but um, God is in control. The thousands of employees who have begun to work from home, nursing homes and hospitals have locked the doors and they've done it not to keep the people in, but to keep visitors out. Concert tours have been canceled in professional basketball. The NBA has actually canceled the season. And I asked myself the other day, what happened to March Madness? Well, March Madness now has taken on a whole new meaning, hasn't it? Things have changed, and things are going to continue to change. Many who have shunned social media over the last several years, now they've signed up. And others who really didn't pay it much heed before now sit by their phones and their computers with great anticipation waiting for whatever the most recent news might happen to be or just waiting for the most recent photo of their sequestered friends or their family, grandchildren, children. Our senior citizens, they've seen hard times, trouble, uncertainty, but even the senior citizens that I've talked to have said that this is like nothing that they've ever experienced. Now church services are being posted on social media. How about that? Stocks have taken a nosedive. Retirement accounts are being crushed. Uncertainty fills the air around us. And to add to all of that, churches... I've had to make the difficult decision to suspend gatherings in favor of broadcast media. We are discovering the use of YouTube and Facebook and all of these other social media platforms. And more conventional pastors such as myself have uh, found it somewhat difficult to maneuver through these things. Um, but we do have the innovation and the technology, and that's good. God has given us many special gifts in all of this. We've been able to reconnect with the generations. There's been, in my opinion, a revitalization of the as the body of Christ. And then I think it's neat to see the, the renaissance of the family that has taken place in so many households. Suddenly thrust into the forefront of the news is life, life, life. It does mean something. Life is precious. 
And the question that seems to be on everyone's minds is how can we sustain life? Because people matter. The elderly, they matter. Brother Jim worked, and who I know is, is watching live. He, uh, he worked in a nursing home for a long time, and I know that Brother Jim would tell you right now, the elderly, they matter. The elderly got a lot of personality, and, uh, and we need them. The children, regardless of their sustainab sustainability, they matter too. Your life matters because you matter. You matter. Whatever happens in this seemingly out of control world, you matter. Now, some of you are uncertain and you're worried and you're even afraid of all that you see and all that you hear and you worry about your children and your grandchildren and you're concerned about yourself and maybe your spouse because they're in bad health and many of you feel isolated and quarantined. Some of you are really alone. And I can imagine that you're lonely. I can imagine that you're afraid. Because it may seem that things are out of control. It may seem like the world is just spinning absolutely out of control. But listen, Hebrews 1.3 says that he, that is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that he is the radiance of the glory of God in the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. The world is not out of his control. He is still sovereign. He is still Lord of all. He is the Lord over your fear. He is the Lord over your anxiety. He is the Lord over your loneliness. He is the Lord over all. Isaiah 59.1 says, The Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor his ear dull, that it cannot hear. God is fully aware of what's going on in this world around us. None of this has caught him off guard. And no matter how it might appear from your perspective, God is in control. God is still in control. Wherever the chaos takes us, whatever changes await us, he is fully and completely in control. He upholds this entire universe by the word of his power. Trust in him. Rest in him. Peter 5, 7, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. He cares for you right where you are. He cares for you. Let's pray together, and then I've got a very short message for you this morning. God, may we find peace today. Peace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us the platform here digitally to share your word. Lord, may we be truly grateful for the gift of salvation and for the blessing of the church. God, we pray that you would continue to knit our hearts together by the power of your unifying spirit. Just as the Apostle Paul in Romans 1.11, just as he yearned to be with the church at Rome, that they might be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. So we too, Lord, long to be with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Yet for this time, we are apart. We know that there will be a reunion time, Lord, when we will celebrate with joy seeing one another face to face. I ask now, Lord Jesus, that you might bless your word, encourage your people, and turn our hearts toward you. Amen. Today, I, I want to talk to the lonely people. The lonely people. Those who feel cornered by their concern. Isolated. 
by their location or trapped by their trouble. Alexander Selkirk, some of you may have heard of him. He was marooned on an uninhabited island in the South Pacific for over four years, really nearly five years, Selkirk was marooned on this deserted island. And at first, he tried to stay there on the shoreline, but when the sea lions came in and began to inundate the beach during their mating season, he was forced to go inland because uh, those things make a lot of noise. He couldn't get any rest, not to mention they were just everywhere. So he went inland, and although this move was an unwelcome change for him, it was actually a blessing in disguise. The interior of the island was full of a variety of foods. There were wild goats on the island, which enabled him to have their meat for consumption as well as their milk to drink. There were wild turnips and wild cabbage, and there were exotic fruits on the island. His life was changed by that sea lion infestation. It was changed because he was marooned, but it was also changed again because of the sea lion infestation. But ultimately, that change was for the better. He was still marooned. He was still alone. He was still isolated. But there were small blessings in the midst of that struggle. At another point during Selkirk's time on the island, his living area was actually infested with rats. But once again, his life was improved when cats, feral cats, came in to hunt the rats. And Selkirk was able to domesticate many of those feral cats, and they gave him some amount of companionship during his lonely time marooned for all those years on the island. See, he was still marooned, even though he had pet cats. He was still lonely, even though he had pet cats. He was still isolated, but there were blessings amidst the struggle. Selkirk, he further explained that he had a Bible with him on the island. And from it, he read regularly. He sang psalms because singing encourages us so much. And he explained that in spite of being marooned, alone, isolated, lonely, that reading the scripture and singing the psalms gave him a sweet comfort that he had not experienced before. Church, today we are meeting at arm's length. We're separated by space, but we're united in the Holy Spirit of God. There are great burdens and worries and concerns, and you, for, perhaps you feel like your support system has been pulled and you're going at this thing all alone. But brother and sister, just because you're alone in the house, maybe by yourself, maybe with a spouse, maybe with your, your children, but not able to see anyone else very much, you're not alone. You're not alone. The church is not the building up the road with the sign on it. We are church. The church is the called out body of believers united in the Holy Spirit of God. Let us use this time to draw near unto the Lord, to feast on his word, to pray for one another, to trust in the Lord Jesus as you've never done before. The world needs a redeemer, a savior, and, and let us pray for that in that, that the world might know the only true God and his son, Jesus Christ, whom he sent. Isolation can be, but the worst kind of isolation, if you think about it, just think about it for a moment. What is the worst kind of isolation? 
The worst kind of isolation is that of being separated from God. The most tragic isolation is the unrepentant sinner who is separated from God. That one, that individual can neither feel God's compassion nor can he reach the ear of the Almighty with their cry for relief. The unrepentant sinner cries out for peace but is unwilling to humble their heart in repentance. And that is the worst kind of isolation. You see, they want the benefits that God has to offer, such as peace, but they want the benefits without accountability. Their sin has separated them from God. That's the fact. But the tragedy is their rejection of the free pardon from sin, the power of sin separates. The power of sin, it violates. And the power of sin, it ultimately isolates us from God, the one who can bring us peace and comfort. Church, many of you feel isolated, but God is ever-present. He is near you. He is with you. And Jesus, Jesus, he felt loneliness before too. He did. When he stood before Pilate in Matthew 27, 12, he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, and no one spoke in his defense. He stood accused and alone. And in verse 17 of Matthew 27, if you want to turn there, Matthew 27, we just talked about verse 12. Now we're on to verse 17 of Matthew 27. Pilate, in that verse, gave the people a choice. He would release one prisoner, Jesus or the notorious Barabbas. And the people cried out for the release of Barabbas. Jesus had to have felt alone, isolated, when no one cried out the name Jesus. In verse 27, if you'll look on down in Matthew 27, Jesus was brought to the headquarters of the governor. And there in the headquarters of the governor, an entire battalion of soldiers stood by looking at him. And as they stared, our Lord Jesus Christ was stripped completely naked of his clothes. And they placed on him a scarlet robe, and then they fashioned a crown of long thorns with their hands, and they pressed it deeply into the scalp of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then they got a reed, a long reed, and they placed that reed into his hand to mimic a scepter. And if that wasn't bad enough, while they were doing all of these things, stripping him naked, putting a scarlet robe on him, placing a crown of thorns on his head, and giving him a reed as a scepter, if that wasn't bad enough, they spat on him. A battalion of soldiers spat on him. The noise in the governor's house must have been overwhelming as they were spitting and laughing and mocking him, saying, look, there's the king. There's the Jewish king. There's the king of the Jews. Look at him. Look at the Jewish king. Now, Jesus stood in their midst, isolated and alone. Jesus. The sinless Son of God was then taken to Golgotha and he was nailed to a cross and he was hung naked again for all to witness as he slowly and painfully began to die for our sin accounted unto him. And God's holy wrath was poured out on his only begotten Son whom he sent. And with that, our Lord Jesus Christ, from that cross, he wailed from his parched lips. And he cried out 
the ultimate words of isolation, the ultimate words of separation from God. Jesus Christ cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was truly isolated, separated. Jesus hung on that cross alone. Your sin separated him from God. And that is how much Jesus loves you. Feeling isolated, feeling lonely. Jesus knows what you're feeling. Jesus knows what you're feeling. He sympathizes with you. All that you're feeling right now, Hebrews 4.15 says that we do not have a high priest, that high priest being Jesus the high priest. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet he without sin. It goes on to say in verse 16, and listen here, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. When you're weak, when you're afraid, when you're worried, when you're concerned, when you're depressed, when you're lonely, when you just want to cry, look, Jesus, he sympathizes with you. He understands human emotions. And the reason why he understands human emotions is because he was human. He's been here. When you feel these things, what is it that you do? What is your response when you feel these things? Do you lose sleep over it? Do you get mad and lash out at people? Do you stick your head in the sand and decide just to disassociate from it? Look back at verse 16 in Hebrews chapter 4. If you want to turn over there and look, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. We need to use this time of isolation to confidently draw near to the throne of grace because it's at his throne the sovereign Lord Jesus Christ, the one who upholds the world by the word of his power, it's his throne. So we need to draw near to his throne of grace that you might receive mercy and find grace to help in your time of need. When you feel lonely, when you feel afraid, when you just can't get on with life because the thoughts are so obsessive that prey upon your mind, let that be a trigger to run to the throne of grace. Run to the one who holds and sustains the world by the word of his power. Think about this. He created the world by his word, and he sustains the world by his word. So run to his throne, trust him, believe him, regardless of your situation, however you find yourself, whatever that situation is where you find yourself, run to his throne. Even if you feel like you're marooned in your home, run to his throne. Even when bills are tugging at your wallet or your purse, run to his throne. Even if it requires a change in your job or maybe an unexpected retirement or maybe you have to move and that makes you feel like you're being pushed to the innermost parts of the island, remember God is there, God is sovereign, and his throne of grace is where you will find help in your time of need. Alexander Selkirk, he was eventually rescued. And some have even proposed that his, that his story contributed to Daniel Defoe's novel, Robinson Crusoe. Selkirk experienced both separation as well as redemption. And you know what, church? One day, we are going to experience relief from this whole pandemic thing. It's like, oh, must come down. What goes down will eventually go up. 
That's the way it is with the markets. They're going to recover one day. Jobs will again be plentiful. Walmart, one day, if you decide that you want to go in there at 3 o'clock in the morning, the day is going to come when Walmart will be open 24 hours again. Students, you will go back to class, and I know some of you, that makes you really happy, and others, it makes you really sad. If you're like me, I would have been very sad. Concerts one day will resume. So if you're a singer, just get ready, because the dates are going to fill up again. NBA, you're going to have a season again. And you know what? One day, church, March Madness is going to be all about college hoops, not about what we've been dealing with this March. And the church, one day we're going to see each other again face to face. And you know what the joy of that is? If we don't see each other face to face again here on this earth, we have the hope in Jesus Christ that we will see each other again face to face in glory. I pray that we continue to value life that we continue to love our family and spend time with one another, quality time. We may not be able to put down the phones, but boy, it's a nice thing just to sit around and see each other's faces again. I pray that through all of this that we will be able to bridge the generation gap and that the entire world will see that they can depend on Jesus Christ alone for their peace and for their deliverance. Psalms 46, 1 through 3 says this, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble let it swell God is your refuge and your strength let us pray together God help us love you help us to want you help us to depend on you for you are worthy of all praise all honor all glory amen I pray that you too would have a blessed Sunday today, and I look forward to posting something for you again on Wednesday. Although it may be kind of short, I'll try to make it a little bit entertaining, and, uh, and then that way we can continue to touch base with one another, utilizing the digital formats that we're learning about right now. Pray that you'd have a blessed day.